probably be five to six years ago that we got up one morning, had a trip with a friend Mark Morris out here, and uh, we went to Saguaro Lake. And on the ramp, you know, I usually know people at the ramps or whatever, like, I see my buddy Dale Mary, another guide out here for many years, and he tells me, hey, Manny, they, uh, they stocked the trout uh, yesterday out here. And I'd always heard of this trout stocking business, but I'd never really experienced it. I had a few swim baits that I'd bought throughout the years, kind of ready for like, if I ever show up at the lake and they stock trout, I might know what to do. And uh, so he tells me that, and I was like, whoa, really, where? He's like, yeah, they put them in, uh, you know, at, at Butcher Jones. And some of the guys from the shop went the other day, or yesterday, last day, yesterday evening, and they caught like, a six and two fives. I said, what a six and two fives? No way. Like I used to catch that maybe once a year, you know? So I thought, well that's fucking that's awesome. Let's go down there. This is a great chance. We get to Butcher Jones and we start seeing like the most life-changing events that you could have in fishing, in bass fishing. And it was trout like being boiled on the way that shad do. Uh, trout being thrown in the air, doing, you know, backflips in the air, and then landing with a swirl underneath. Uh, it sounded like people were throwing in bowling balls, or like small dogs into the water. And it, bah, 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 bah. Like, you knew they weren't carp, right? And you knew they were bass, but they weren't the typical bass that are out there eating the shad that I'm used to. They were the trout eaters. And uh, we, saw, we saw things like, there was one that I clearly remember. This trout started freaking out and it starts porpoising over the surface. It starts swimming so fast that it's porpoising. And it it's just going, you know, it's just running for its life. <clears throat> and it it ends up hitting one of those black coots that we have. Those black ducks. Boom! It hits that duck. It sounds like a pro tennis player smacking like a tennis ball on TV. Just dry. The duck like wah, 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 starts quacking. It's looking around like, what the heck is going on? It's doing circles. And underneath you just see this like massive swirl. Whoosh. And you can tell like that trout just died. Uh, you know, we went out on, what would it be? Mid-September and it was the first day really when, or like at least the first weekend, when uh, there was finally like a temperature drop. Uh, remember we were driving to the lake together and we could tell, you know, it's still dark out, but we could tell that there was clouds in that eastern direction. We saw lightning. So like we had some clues. Uh, I looked at my watch, I saw the barometric pressure that was, you know, it was dropping. So like we had a lot of clues, obviously, that like a storm was coming in. and. Uh, and I, one of the things that I've learned is that when these storms roll in, when that pressure changes, it makes fish go up shallow. And from what, you know, I'm not a biologist from any means, but from what I've heard, it, it affects the fish, fish that have swim bladders, it affects them where they need to go up shallow. And it's kind of nature's way of making everybody go shallow, making the predators eat the prey, and do that before like a storm comes in because once the storm comes in, it, you know, there's a lot more conditions going on that will affect a predator's of, like, effectiveness of, of feeding. And uh, so I knew that and I thought, you know what, just pattern wise, I like to fish the river in a fall type of pattern or this end of summer. I know that the fish are back there. I know that predominantly they'll be big. It's a really fun way for me to fish. I love the, the challenging aspect of the cast. It's all about presentation there. You don't, we're not just m like mindlessly throwing into water or into grass patches. We're really targeting specific spots. So it's, for me, that's more than half the fun is really presenting the bait and, uh, and getting it in those right spots. The catching of the fish is really like a, an added bonus. So. We got there, I knew what I wanted to do. I already had a plan. Looking back at previous years, I had been doing really good on, 
on like rats and big glides, kind of these more surface type of baits in this time of the year. So I thought this is really gonna work. This has a really good chance of working. there and sure enough you know right off the bat we start seeing follows blow-ups fish on uh, it, it went really good it went really effective so I guess I would say it's it's definitely like just uh, history and and in, once you start doing this for many years you start realizing the patterns the behavior uh, the migration of these fish which to me is really like one of the amazing parts of, of fishing for these large bass that they take us all over the lake Sometimes we're fishing them super shallow. Sometimes we're fishing super deep. Sometimes we're in the middle of the lake using electronics, the fish structure that you would think like, what is this, some kind of like hidden rock pile that only this guy knows about? And sometimes we're fishing very obvious ambush points. And uh, that's what we were doing that day, just uh, really targeting these really exciting ambush points where you know, you know, cast that thing beyond it, work it into the point, pin it into there. And so there's a good chance of something happening. And uh, when it all comes together, it's, it's the most exciting thing for me. I think that everybody feels it and it, it really is kind of like the lifting of this detention of summer uh, that happens and for me of course it's kind of like hey here we go like the season's upon me it's starting it's time for me to go out and track these things down get back in tune with everything get back in the flow of it make sure everything works on the boat <laughs> and uh and get out there and start it up because pretty soon we're gonna have uh a bunch of clients coming down that are ready to experience it also. So 
So we started off with that rat, we did really good. We kept running it. And then finally it seemed like maybe, you know, the sun started to come up higher, those clouds started to go away. It started to be more like your typical bright sunny day. And uh, we, I think, you know, we ran another spot on the river and still like there, we didn't see any follows or any action. So I kind of figured, you know what, it's time to now play into that game where like they're probably about getting about as sick and tired of the sun as we are. So let's try to find them in places where they can hide from the sun, both with either structure or docks or, you know, uh, under like fish habitats. We also ran, you know, those weren't successful, but we tried it and uh, started going down the line. The Battle Shad is a amazing, it's been an amazing tool for me that, you know, when Mike Gilbert first brought it out here, one of the prototypes of it, I kind of looked at it and I thought, well, it's not the typical, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger in size bait that I usually used to chase a lot, you know? I used to think like, well, the bigger the, the bigger the bait, the bigger the fish will be that come around it. And that is something that I still believe. But when I first saw him bring out this bait, I thought, well, this is going to be great for like a lot of those four and five pounders that we see follow some of these baits and just not really commit. I thought, man, this will be great for guiding. We'll get more bites. Well, lo and behold, here we are like months later and it is the bait, you know, that has led to more eight and nine pound fish. And I don't, I, I think I can really only count on one hand the amount of fish that I've caught on that bait that are under six, seven pounds. Like it's been an amazing, versatile bait for me. I can fish it deep, I can fish it shallow, I can fish it in tulies, I can fish it on grass, through the grass, on the grass, rocks. It, we have literally used it in every situation and it has been effective. And not just here in Arizona, I've taken it to the Delta, done extremely well there. I've even taken it to Tarpon in the salt water and they annihilated it, including the barracudas that would cut it in half, glue it back together, ready to go for more. So for me, it's been a really neat bait and something that also really trains you to how to set hook, how to fight, and how to how to connect with these fish that are eating soft baits, whether it's your slow moving like wedge tail type baits or whether it's these paddle tails. It's a it's been a great training device for my uh, for my guide trips, and uh, I just it's it's been such a confidence bait that I know. I can pull that out fishing in any kind of water and it'll work. So the place we were finally, I think, effective with it was actually on a dock, you know, and true, one of Mike Gilbert's uh, like favorite styles of fishing. And uh, we, you know, we got it, we made it happen. Again, it's just super you. versatile and I knew that as that sun comes up, the fish are probably going to start going down and a great way to target them would be the paddle tail. Another kind of a, you know, reaction-ish type of bait. It's not the super slow kind of soft bait. It's kind of in between and uh, fits the bill for like the water temperatures. I think they were about 72 degrees. So they were warmer temperatures that we were dealing with. Something that I could, I knew that I wouldn't be in the wrong completely swimming it through the water column or bumping and, you know, skipping along bottom or through grass. So it, it ended up, uh, it ended up working and it ended up connecting on a few other trips after that also.